Well, we didn't continue. Yesterday we finished with the notion that Hashem has all the world in His mind, as it were. When you talk about Hashem's thoughts, He doesn't have to add new knowledge. Okay, am I allowed to make a controversial comment? Sure. Which you may not like? No. You may not like it at all, you might be offended. No. Why do I need to know what Plato said and what uh, Shmeto said? and all these other people. So, no, I'm asking a question. Why? Because there's turning no, it around is, from the is, fact that... Is that, is that something which is okay? How do you talk about all these Greeks and Shmeeks and all these other guys? Tzemach Tzedek talks about them openly. Okay. He mentions them openly. Okay. No, I'm but the so, Rambam I'm certainly... Not, I'm not attacking. No, I'm asking no, no, very, no, very so serious. There's no, there's no harm um, in knowing where it came from. There's, some, there's people who think that it didn't come from there. But it all comes from Hashem. Said it. So it has different paths. One of the paths is through the Torah directly. Yeah. And the other path is through the Chochmah Bogrim. I'm a bit hypersensitive to anything you know, which might take me back yeah, to I know, you're too hypersensitive. Yeah, I'm, I'm too what? You're too hypersensitive. Okay. You're right, it's hypersensitivity. There's no... You don't need to, to, to know their names. Uh, yeah. Usually the reason I, I do mention it is because there's people that watch that changes the way they look at things. And they say, oh, wait, the Torah, doesn't. or say it differently, the Chachamim, our Chachamim, don't just uh, sit in their uh, room uh, immune to what's going on in the rest of the world. No. They know I exactly know the what's Rebbe, going on. The Rebbe you know, knew so, all about uh, science. So when he needed to, he quoted. Actually, but there's a difference between the Gedolim and the Chachamim and the Mies. So, so I don't want to uh, uh, elaborate on that, but when you put something on the internet, yeah. you don't know where it's going. And so, in the places where it goes, yeah. it can certainly make a difference for somebody to hear the name of what the source was or where it's also discussed, as just, opposed to just, just hearing it. what happened to Aristotle in the end. Said on it. They can go find out by themselves. In my regime, the devil. You know what he died of. I know. Listen. <coughs> so he says, and in the end, the maskil yovin the kut advarim velav kol mocha savilda. Where are we? Question. And daf ted ted and daf yudalad amuda dalad. The middle. Yeah. Okay. So the bottom line was that when we talk about knowing something, we add something to our mind. We have to add a form of knowledge, then we contemplate it. Knowledge of the thing. Okay? Knowledge of the thing. We have to learn what it is as well. So. We don't know the objects in the world until we come in contact with them. We don't have it in our minds. What we do have in our minds, which is very interesting, is we have ourselves in our minds. And because the world created in the form of man, to a certain degree, all of it. The thing that's most cited is how much water on the land. Okay. <clears throat> it's one of the things that's a beautiful, uh, a beautiful correlation, a beautiful parallel. The man is about, that's how we describe it, 70% water, 30% other molecules. And, uh, and the earth is about 70% well, man water. Is a okay, so that's it. Aulam Natan Bilibam. That's the Pasuk in Kohelet in Ecclesiastes. Okay. The world was put in their hearts. But there it doesn't mean that the world as it is, the entirety is in my mind. Because that's not true. What is true is that the totality of my being is in my mind. Meaning that my brain somehow knows where my finger is. By the way, that's not always true. If a person has some kind of uh, dysfunction, in his uh, then something has gone wrong. Okay. So then they don't know where their body is. So that's even more proof. Okay. okay. So from you learn the rule. That there are people who don't know how to do this. That's, this is my wife taught me. That this is the first thing that somatic uh, sensing allows a person to do. See, I without know looking. What somatic sensing. That I know where my fingers are without looking at them. Touch type thing in school. No, no, <laughs> somatic. <laughs> anyway, it's touch type. Okay. Without looking. Vinektiv. 
So now we're apart from the fact that Hashem knows, He knows everything that's in the world because it is His mind. Because Nothing is outside of His knowing, mind. Uh, that, that is Hashem. Knowing implies that it's something external. Nachon. So here we're not saying like I added it into me. We're saying it was always there. Okay. Yeah. Knows from because everything was created from Him, so He knows it all. But now we find that the prophets talk about something more. What do they talk about? Like like our puzzle. Suddenly he goes down. He knew anyway. So what does it mean that he goes down? So we find an interesting parallel in the prophets. In Zechariah, in Perak Dalet, it says, shiva ele Hashem hema meshotetot bechol Where are you? In the middle of that. Where are you? Where Just a little further down. You're too high. It looks like your finger is too high. If you... Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. What does that mean? There are seven eyes of Hashem that are wandering the earth. The entire earth. It's an image, obviously. Okay. What's an image for? It's also in Devera Yamim, in the Chronicles, in the Second Chronicles. It says the same thing. To wander means coming out in order to know something. That's the wander, that's the image here. That somehow he's going out of himself. Means that he is <clears throat> doing something more than he knew until now. He is actually dressing himself in this. Mitlabshut <laughs> bedavar anire. It's mitlabeshel. It's it's in clothing. It's imbuing the eyesight, the knowledge within this thing that's the focus of the eyesight, as it were. Again, Hashem doesn't well, see it. This entangled, no. You know, okay. It says he talks that about the person. This thinks about something and stops thinking yeah. about it and it doesn't exist anymore. Right. Where's Hashem? Yeah. 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 By Hashem, of course, it continues to be in His knowledge. But we say that it's not in the sense of Iklapshut. It's, it, it's, in his, it's in His knowledge as a makif. It's what we call Ashra'ah. But it's not in Iklapshut. Ashra'ah means it's in the background. It's there all the time. You see it, but you're not putting your mind to it. Okay? So at first it would seem to you, but why does he have to enclose himself? I already said the answer, because it's a different form of knowledge. And he's going to say it later on. But you have to understand the question. The question is, it sounds a little bit like he didn't know about this until his eyes wandered to see it. We already said he, he does know about it, but so, so what's going on? Because all the spheres have lights and vessels. So he's giving us a little primer about how this works. So it means that there is a vessel and there is light. Okay. So until the vessel contains the light of the infinite, the vessel is not called in a state of enclosement. And what, is, what does it do? When the, when the light, the infinite light, goes into the vessel, we saw this in the previous Mimer last week, so what the what the vessels do is they change the light. They make the light able to be received by creations. Because otherwise the light is infinite. It's too great for them to, 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 to uh, integrate it into them. They're only blinded by it. So with the vessel, the vessel, the first understanding in Kabbalah is that what the vessel does is 
it lessens, it dims the intensity of the light. It's a type of tzimtzum. It's not the, the first tzimtzum, but it's a type of tzimtzum. It makes it uh, possible for something else to receive this effluence from God. So for instance, Michael, the archangel Michael, he receives the chesed, and Gavriel receives the gvura. It would be too much, and they, they need, it's like when you teach somebody something, if you're, let's say somebody doesn't know Hebrew, you can't teach them Chumash. You first have to explain to them Hebrew. You have to split it apart into its different constituents. If I would just throw at somebody who doesn't know Hebrew, a daf of a blad of Gemara, uh, but you I, can't translate. Why can I not translate? You that's can. A, you can. right. That's so. That's English. the first thing that I do before. Thinking, what's the logic here? What does this mean? I have to first of all take it. I can't throw it at them. Let's say I just give this to somebody who doesn't speak Hebrew. There's so many pieces here. This is just tremendous light. This book is just such tremendous light that they can't, they don't know what to do with it. So I have to split it apart. There's no light there at all. This person who doesn't understand it, it's a closed book, it's black. That's why sometimes you say that the the light is so intense that it's black, that I don't see anything. But it's not that there's nothing here, there's a tremendous light. You're just, (laughs) to you, for you it's black. But the light is here. It's tremendous knowledge. It's tremendous holiness. They, they're not attuned to it. They can't. So you have to break it up and give, give each, each part in its due course. So that's what Hashem does with the vessels of the Svirot. Same thing with giving a tzedakah. The soul, who, what's the tzedakah? Is the tzedakah the money? Or is, it, is the money just a, 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 a physical manifestation of the soul's will to give? Is there a difference? Huge difference. Because if it's just money, it's not tzedakah. Meaning if somebody would, if somehow in my bank account, the bank would make a mistake and add another zero. Uh, hopefully to the end, not to the front. So that's not tzedakah. I can be very happy with it, but it's not tzedakah. It's not a connection between two people. It's not yours. It's also not mine, but that's a different so problem. Say, so it's not an issue. It is an issue. If so let's per, say, let's say they say, okay, we made a mistake. A we have to. Past, if a person walks past you, and he puts his hand up his tzedakah, and you give him a tzedakah, and you smile at him and say, I wish you a full slam or whatever it is. Or, if you throw at him as a shekel and say, get out of here, you're spoiling my day because he still has his shekel of tzedakah. So there's another example. The difference is in the way that you did the mitzvah. Yeah, so it's probably not a mitzvah that way. The physical mitzvah of receiving the money was done. But the mitzvah is a, a, an angel of broken feet. So, in any case, it's not. That's why I took the example of the bank, but there's not a person. There's no mitzvah there at all. Nothing. The bank didn't do oh, a mitzvah. That's not true, because says Mishuk and Arak, but if you're walking along the street and I find the shekel, the Moshe Gino dropped on the floor, right? and I go with it to buy myself a piece of paper, Moshe Gino got a mitzvah, go get up. Yeah, it's not a mitzvah, says so. Okay. So you're saying the bank did do a mitzvah? No, the bank doesn't do a mitzvah because it wasn't the bank's money to start off with. And it wasn't theirs to give to you. And it's been tried and true in many thoughts it. around the world. But if the bank gives you an extra hundred thousand dollars by mistake and you go and spend it, you end up in prison. That's a million percent tried. Mm-hmm. No, so it's not theirs. It does not belong to them. Okay, settle. In any case, I hope you understand. You don't know the story of the Vishnu Sarebra? No. What's the story? Oh, a famous story. One day the Vishnu Sarebra said to the guy, I'm going for a walk. So he, he went for a walk and he came to some house and he said, knock on the door, knock on the door. And they walked in and he sat down. And the guys who was the bank manager said, you know, 
Because it's always come to visit me, and brought down drinks and food, and da 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 da. The Israel didn't touch it and didn't say anything. So he sat in silence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So say it. Keep going, keep going. You know the story. I know the story. But okay, so. Since you're saying it, say it, say it to me. It to give away that he gave money in the end. It caused him to do a mitzvah. But the mitzvah only came about when he gave up his own someone? personal and private money. That's not what you said. Okay, that's about the bank, you're saying. Yeah. But that's not what you said about when somebody loses money. Definitely when somebody loses money, it's a mitzvah, somebody else finds it. And in it was a mitzvah, but it was a mitzvah. Everything, we just said everything's a shkoch right? In any case, in any case. Shem wanted you to give it to In any case, the, the mashal here is, is a little bit different. It's saying that if the neshama didn't have a body, it couldn't lose the money even. You have to if have a physical vessel. have a body. Yeah. The neshama cannot give you from its light, which is what it's doing through the mitzvah of tzedakah, without a physical body. The physical body allows the tzedakah could also be giving a, hu- a hand, helping so someone. So what happens if somebody's passed away and they've left a Yerushim to tzedakah? So what is that? That's not coming from the physical. Or you want to say that it came when, when they had physical, a physical body. It was left over. Right. It's, it's remnants, it's a residue. But they can't do something new now. That, that raises a whole question, which I don't want to get into now because it's too big for me to, to get into, which is, what does it mean that you do something in schus of somebody who's already nifter? It's a very interesting question. Yeah. And this is my mother's yard next week, you can tell me. So this is my grandfather's yard so, site. <laughs> so, so what does it mean that now I'm going to go say, say Kaddish? What's the point of Kaddish? People don't know this. What's the point of Kaddish? Why is Kaddish so important? Elevates the show. Why? Sure. Said, why? I'm doing something in a schus. What? Saying the Kaddish, that's a schus? No. It says, Kaddish is a Kiddush Shem Shemaim. That's why it's called Kaddish. It's Kiddush Shem Shemaim Barabim. The Kiddush is that people answer. That's why you can't say Kaddish by yourself. People don't understand this. I'll go and... It's like the text itself somehow that has this mystical quality. No, the text simply says, we exalt Hashem. Everybody says, Amen. Everybody answers. If they don't answer, you didn't do anything. So people go to the place, mumble, mumble, Kaddish. Nobody listens, nobody cares. You didn't do anything. The same thing is true, by the way, by the davening. If people don't answer, Amen, to your brachas, to your Shmanesra as a shat, you didn't do anything. Okay, but nevertheless, how does that help the Neshama? Right, that's a huge question. It's a huge question with a, with a huge answer, which is not simple at all. Because what he's saying here is, if you don't have a body, you can't be Zoche. You can't, how are you going to perform? So, in a certain sense, the idea is, this is the idea, that the direct descendants are the result of that body. That's, what, that's where it goes back to. So I'm still working by inertia, some inertia from my grandfather. Something from him is still alive here. So that part is the part now, that's why I feel a connection, uh, not just because I was told, but also because there is something physically here from him. And that part is now saying the Kaddish. And he's causing a, 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 a Kiddush Shem Shema. So that's a short answer, but it's a really very complex topic. But there's no doubt. And a very important point, not directly connected. I remember reading the Rebbe wrote, the difference between human beings and all the animal kingdom is that basically the animals don't know who their parents are. Basically, generally speaking, right? You know, the birds don't no, know they who don't. they don't. That's why they, but that's there are, why the... But, but, there are, but there are some animals where like an elephant, the baby will walk along with his mother. For a while. Or the cow will walk along. There is... Some, but after so but, but, the, but there is some connection. There is some connection, okay. even if, if between a first generation and a third generation. No connection at all. No connection at all. Absolutely nothing. Zero, none whatsoever. Only in the humans. So whoever says why, why is there a connection between the Abba and the Nechet? Because of the love that the Abba had for the child. So the love of the child can Here even go through. To, that's why. You're not saying Kaddish for your great-grandfather. 
I don't, I don't know. I don't but really you don't know it? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> There's no connection, right? Thanks, thanks to the German people, I have no idea who they were. <laughs> I could have known. But, yeah, but, but, but there is a I mean, I know who my great grandparents are, and they even know where's the yacht's at, my great grandfather. But just about manages to get through to your grandparents. Now, sometimes, sometimes you know your you know the relationship your parent has with the, their grand. If they're alive, you yeah. see it, and then it is something. It Your depends on what you see. Their parents? No, not with their parents. Well, their, if their grandparents were still alive, in my case, that could have easily been. But they all perished in, the, in World War II. So if I would have seen their relationship, it would have meant something. Because I've seen people that could have great... You see it. I mean, I don't see for... But I never time. saw my grandfather. I never saw him. Because my grandfather passed away when he was very young. And yet I still feel an affinity because of my father. Right. Okay. Okay. So, getting back to this. So you have to have a physical hand in order to give it tzedakah. The same thing, that the vessels allow the light to manifest, to become something, to do something. So what he's saying now is these seven eyes that are wandering the world, what are they really? They're the seven vessels. Another way of calling them, instead of vessels, is angels. He says it's the same thing. Because Michal receives from Chesed, and what he wants to, meet, what he wants to say is that Michal is like an emissary of the vessel of Chesed. And Gavriel is an emissary, he's an extension of the uh, vessel of Gvura, and so on. So they're the ones that are all over. And they're the ones who are giving and, and, and noting what is going on, because they have a vessel, so there's an interaction. It's not just the light. What he's saying is the light without the vessel doesn't make, doesn't leave a mark. It can't be integrated. It's not that it's not there. An example. Where we are standing right now, sitting right now, there are tons of cosmic rays. There's the cosmic background radiation. And there's innumerable signals from our cell phones and TVs and whatever else, from cell towers, whatever you want, here. But it's just light. There is no vessel to receive it. Because there is no vessel to receive it, it does not make an impression. It doesn't It just goes through. There's some people say physically damaged. Like yeah, I don't want to get into that. That means that you can be a vessel at the level of the basic radiation. But you certainly can't be a vessel for the content, for the information. Only for the radiation. For the amplitude of the wave. That's all. But you can't understand... What in the world is traveling through us right now? So he says the same way. The way that Hashem knows without the vessel means that he's like the cosmic, he's just everywhere. That's called a shra. He's everywhere, but it's not integrated. The whole purpose of Chassidus was how do I take the uh, omnipresence of Hashem, of Hashem's, uh, even, even of, his, of his providence, and I turn it into something that's affecting me, that's integrated into me. How do I build a vessel? How do I build a receiver to sense this and to actually understand what it means? But the same goes for Hashem, as it were. That if he's just, it's in his mind, that's called a shra. That's just, that it's all in Hashem's mind, it's true. But there's no interaction because there's no vessel from his side to be able to even influence. And it's like saying that in order for him to, um, to affect me, he also needs to put a vessel. Because otherwise the light is too infinite. Say, say like this, that Hashem is unfathomable. So you could say, yes, like most people do. I know there's Hashem. I know Hashem runs everything, but I don't feel it though. I don't feel that I have to worry about how I act in a room. 
I can walk around naked in a room. Nobody sees me. Hashem also doesn't see me, as it were. Of course He sees me, but that seeing doesn't affect me. When will it affect me? If I put a, a book... Why can't that He sees you, but um, you know, it doesn't bother you? It doesn't bother Him, it doesn't bother me. There's no integration on either side. Because it's too great. So He knows, He sees, but it's like He's watch. It, it doesn't mean anything. So that's a very important distinction between light and light with a vessel. Again, to say light, people hear, again, light. We're talking about a concept that's trying to express God's revelation in the world. That's what light means. So he's revealed, but I don't see it. It's like light in space. That's another example of it. Between the sun and the earth, there's... It's dark. It's dark. It's not just dark, it's frozen. When does it heat up? If you stand there. If you stand there, you're already a vessel. And suddenly the light can burn you. It, how did it suddenly become so hot in space? <laughs> it, was, it was minus, you know, 100 degrees a second ago. And now I come there with my spacesuit, and my spacesuit begins to burn. What happened? Because now there's a vessel for it to connect to, to, to permeate. That changes everything, even though it's the same, same place. So that's the difference between Hashra and between Yitlabshut. The moment that it's enclosed, it becomes integrated, it becomes felt. It becomes something. So I feel that he's looking at me. But until I'm not there with a vessel, it's as if he's not looking at me. Although he is, he's there just as much. But there's no impression left. That's what it means. It says also, this is today's Tanya, and I just read on the WhatsApp group, that the tzaddik, when he leaves the world, he leaves an impression. He leaves an impression in the Gan Eden Atachton, in the lower Gan Eden, lower Garden of Eden, around his, his, uh, his, his, his being here, which is his Emunah, Ava, and Yira. That's, those are the three midos that are left over. So he brings the concept from the Ramah of Pano, that it's in the Avir Gan Eden around the person. And then he mentions something that's written, even the Rambam brings this. It's called Lo Zaza Shechina Ad Shishir Aroshim. Now when you talk about Shechina, there's already Aroshim. Before Shechina, that's the whole difference between Shechina and Ensof. The Shechina means that there was a vessel. There, there was already some vessel. So if there was a vessel, it leaves an impression. If there was no vessel, no impression. Nothing left over. Even though the light was there. But there was no vessel at all. So he says, the Rambam brings it, in Ilchot Bet HaBchira, he writes, that, Afilu Shecharuvinem Hareim Bigdushatam. It says, the temple, even though it's been destroyed, it's not there anymore, but, it lived, but it's still holy, the place is still holy. Why? So he doesn't say it explicitly, but this is this principle that when the sh- not doing shmir, the you should, we should. The only, the only, but but again, like like how how it is in this crazy world that the only ones who can't go are, which is a, which is right, but of course the, you know these Muslim terrorists certainly should not be there. In any case. I have to go. Are you going to Tel Aviv tomorrow? Uh, I might. I might. Let's talk about it tomorrow. No, I'm telling you, I'm going to.